But let's take a look and see what kind of chest 960 we have. This one looks very aggressive. One of the things about chest 960 is that a lot of the time it's about the configuration of the bishops. And with these two bishops on uh, A1 and B1, they're kind of like already developed. Um, so I think that we might see some slashing attacks in this 960 battle. Yeah, I, it's it's weird when you get the two bishops like that. You feel like you spend so much time in real chess games, right, Jen? Trying to get your bishops lined up like that, like you know, and, and then in chess nine sixty, it just happens sometimes. Um, but That's right, like but, last game, um, Gorg spent a lot of time playing bishop b set, bishop b seven, and bishop c five, right? And right, bishops were beautiful. Yeah, you try to get those two bishops lined up, and and here and here you have that, and now Gorg opens the center, which I think is correct. He's going to have a small space advantage having this pawn on c4 and, you know, maybe even has a Meroxy bind type structure he can try for with e4 at some point. Um, so again, I think white has an advantage here. I think that this is a this is a, a good position, a good starting position for white in a chess 960 game, having this small lead in development. We'll see what they do with the kings, right, Jen? We've got these kings with the rooks, right? That's just... Uh, Epaulette. Feels like a smothered mate waiting to happen over there, right? It's just <laughs> totally, totally weird to have the king and rook so so close to each other. Yeah, that's why they call those mates with if you get if you mate the king like that, it's called an epaulette mate, and it's supposed to be like the king um, trapped by its own shields. Like the rooks, right. the rooks are basically the shield. Right. I love that bait. Here, here the uh, the d five strike shows that Karyakin is trying to return the favor and also have an open center, and suddenly it actually looks like Sergey is is in a decent position. He's got the lone center pawn, so hashtag make Aaron Nimzovich proud. You know, he's got the center pawn here, and uh, and Georg's, Georg's pawn on E2 isn't so happy. That's a long hashtag, Nanny. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes you go with the long hashtag just for irony. You know? <laughs> you don't you always capitalize expect, the words, though? You don't always expect it to catch on, right? You just you go with hashtag just to kind of get the emphasis. So. <laughs> <laughs> Make Aaron Nimzovich proud. Not a hashtag I've used. I use lightly. Um, queen to d2 comes in. White is. Don't forget, White could castle long here, Jen. He could. He could. He could play king to c1, rook to d1 on the next move. Ah, oh, very nice. So that's just a fun little. F I mean, it'd be, it seems super dangerous, right? You wouldn't want to put your king over here on this open file, but it is. It is possible. So must be noted. Now you got to play f3, I assume. There's just no other way to deal with that threat. And and then who castles long? Could be black. No, not quite. But <laughs> but okay, f3 comes. And uh, and my my theory about white being so much better in the chess 960 will will maybe be debunked in this game because this just currently I've I've loved the the transition Karyakin's gotten here with good control over the center. Yeah, it's really weird to see this position without any knights. Like, it feels like there should be knights on the board for some reason. Right. Well, it's because we're, you know, we're looking at a position where there really hasn't been uh, any any kingside development, and yet the knights are gone somehow. Exactly. So, it, it feels kind of freaky, right? Like, you look right. at it, and you're like, something's wrong, but I don't know what it is. Right. <laughs> that's, well, he's, he's... that's what Chess 960 is all about, though, kind of challenging your strategic assumptions about chess. And both players are going to castle here. I think that Karyakin will probably do the same. Um, <laughs> just saw a funny thing. Haggard, Haggard, CC in the Chess TV chat said the rook jumped. Uh, he was. Uh, it's just funny. Maybe he wasn't aware of, of that. I wonder. I wonder if Karyakin is also not aware of of how to get castled in Chess Nine Sixty because, um, because he hasn't done it and he didn't do it last game either. So that's a interesting query. I. I mean, I. I could be wrong. I mean, certainly E Four makes a lot of sense, and uh, but I'm wondering. I think that I I think that you got to be wrong about that. Come on, he had to at least. I, I hope I'm wrong. Obviously, I just always get worried. You know that maybe maybe there's something that you know something non people, non. People do sometimes forget, but uh, it, I think maybe it's like the the fact that it's so weird they kind of forget. But wait a second, what's this move queen c two? Okay, so it it attacks um, c six, so we uh -huh. don't have time to take on f three um, because. Unfortunately, because Sergei is not castled, there's going to be some tactics on the back rank after we take the, the bishop on e3. So takes on f3, queen c6, queen c6, rook c6, rook e3, there's a mate. That doesn't change. So he decides to guard the bishop, um, kind of agrees, but, but maybe now 
I mean, does York risk? Does he brave the adventure of double isolated epons and take? I, I, it feels weird to do that. More logical seems to move like rook to d1, and then we'll really find out if Sergey knows how to castle okay, because yes. that would be the only. Okay, he goes for it. We're gonna find out right now. Jorg might be playing the chess 960 rules gambit, and I'm wrong. It's good when Danny's wrong. It's a good world. Not uh, the last time, right? It, it, uh, certainly not the last, and, and far from the first. And uh, so there you go. Um, the they have united the rooks and. Uh, and game on. Black is better again, right, after that castles. I think the person who's saying that uh, the rook keeps jumping is actually joking. So I, I think he is too, but it's just uh, pretending to be shocked. <laughs> I'll, I'll be curious to see Guess the Move in Chess 960. I wonder how many people play Guess the Move in that, although now, now we're looking at something that's much closer to a real chess position besides one highly illegal fact, which is that this bishop is on b1 and not f1, given that white has not moved any pawns. So other than that illegal, illegal uh, thing, that this is this is looks like a normal chess game. So when are we, so we we can't take on f three because of checkmate, <laughs> but otherwise right. it would be a really good move. <laughs> Maybe he's going to do it now. That's actually an opportunity now, right, Jen? I mean, now if he takes it, White takes the exchange, but the Queen takes with tempo, and suddenly Black is getting compensation. You know, Karyakin is calculating that right now. Look at his eyes moving a mile a minute. That's Falling true. Down time. C six is hanging. I, I knew that. he was going for it. You could tell it was coming. Right here he goes. There's a lot of tactics to consider here because C six is also hanging, but um, Bishop F two played. And, no, and he quick. saw that he could get out of it with tempo. I think I think he was calculating a mile a minute and 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 saw this opportunity. I think he'll take on G two now. No, even better. He has a switch with the queen and he gets a mating attack. So now White is going to be Bishop G three doesn't help. Because you no, he's losing the exchange, and so wow, and Meyer is frustrated. That is a tough one. What a what a nice combination there by Karyakin, right? That was a highlight reel right there. I mean, that was amazing to see him calculate quickly, swindle his way to a uh, to an exchange sacrifice victory. And I wonder how deeply he had calculated that before he even took on F three, Jen. 